Hey there, no penguin here, and Photon Hypernova is upon us. And I'm gonna cut right to the chase. There is a lot of cool cards in this set, and I want to take a swing at it early. So today, we will be looking at the TCG exclusive, Diabolantis the Menacing Mantis. Yes, as it's very clear from the thumbnail and title, you all knew this was an Aeturia deck, but many of you probably don't know what this card does. This is a generic level 8 synchro that, when synchro summoned, you can send insect or plant monsters from your deck to the graveyard up to the number of non-tuners used for the synchro material. So if you just use a level 4 tuner and a level 4 non-tuner, you get to send 1. If you have 3 materials, you get to send 2, so forth and so on. And while you control it, you can target any plant or insect type you control, make it a tuner. With that said, let's get into the card by card. We have Triple Naturia Camellia. Dumps a Naturia card when you normal summon it, which in most cases is going to be your sacred tree to get a search, but can also be things like Mole Cricket. Also, if your Naturia card would tribute itself for its effect, you could send the top two cards of your deck instead. This is an amazing way to make sure your cards are staying on the field and getting their advantage again and again, and honestly, this is the bread and butter of Naturia from here on out. Another amazing card is Mole Cricket. This is a level 1 insect type. During the main phase, you can tribute this card or send two from the top of your deck if you have Camilla on the field. Special summon a Naturia from your deck. But you can special summon two if your opponent controls the highest attack monster. So if you're playing into an established board, you will be able to get two Naturias from your deck to continue your combos. And if you summon a Naturia Synchro or if your opponent summons a extra deck monster, you can special summon this back from the graveyard. And that first effect, it is a quick effect. They were playing a bunch of one of Some of these are for just levels. Some of these are for their effects. For example, Stinkbow can stop the battle phase. Sunflower can stop monster effects. And Vayne can stop spell traps. Onto the Ishizu cards, we have Triple Medora, Triple Keldo, Double Kelbeck, and one Aikido. Now we're not playing Vernacils because the Diabolantis is a dark type monster. So I decided to use that freedom to throw in a few spicy techs. One of our other cards coming in Photon Hypernova is Tree Crown Armor Purer Biogram. This is an insect monster level 9 with 3400 attack. Cannot be normal summoned or set, must be summoned from your hand or graveyard by banishing 3 insects and or plant monsters from your hand or graveyard. So you can dump this with your Diabolantis to have an extra 3400 body for your battle phase. For game, it's really great, and most importantly here, while this is on the field, your opponent cannot activate monster effects in response to your spell and trap card effects. Also, also, once per turn, you can destroy all face-up monsters on the field except for insect and plants, but this card can't attack directly this turn. This is a fantastic tool for breaking boards, and this is such a cool card, I'm so glad this is getting printed. Next, we have two level fours that can special summon themselves from hand. We have Bee Troop Assault Roller, who can banish an insect from the graveyard to summon itself, or Mothman, who can danger to summon itself. To search these out, we are playing one Goki Pole, another target we can send with the Diabolantis, send it to the graveyard to add one of these to the hand. And finally, we are playing one Spore, another target for Diabolantis send, and it is a tuner that can modulate its level and special summon itself back from the graveyard, which is just great. Onto the spells, we have Naturia Spring. Breeze. This has three effects, but only one of them is relevant. Special summon a Naturia monster from your hand or graveyard. And this is not a once per turn, so this is basically like you have three monster reborns in the deck, and since I play monster reborn, you essentially have four. But you can also fusion or synchro with a quick effect with this card as well. Triple Pot of Prosperity for its consistency, one reborn, called by one for one, and Foolish Burial Goods because our trap card, Sacred Tree, gets a search of any Naturia card when it's sent to the graveyard. And like I said before, the go-to send for Camilla. Speaking of cards that like to be sent to the graveyard, Exchange of the Spirits. We're not playing this for its effect, we are playing it for the Gravekeeper's Trap. Gravekeeper's Trap can be sent by Medora directly from the deck, and if Exchange of the Spirit is in the graveyard, it basically blanks your opponent's graveyard for the rest of the game. At least as long as Exchange of the Spirit's there. Onto the extra, we have have IP, Unicorn, and Access Code. The only two rank 4s worth playing, Paguska and Abyss Dweller. Then we're playing Naturia Beast and Barkeon. Beast can infinitely negate spells as long as we mill the top two of our deck, and Barkeon can infinitely negate traps as long as we banish two from our graveyard. These two together make a really impeccable wall that your opponent will have a hard time beating. One Juju for removal, and another card that's coming up this set, Circle of Fairies. This is basically a double summon for insects and plant monsters. And while it does have an effect if a card is destroyed by battle card effect, the only thing we really care about here is that double summon effect. 
Diabolantis, we talked about. Dragon Berserker as a backup level 8. Two level 10s in Shenging and Barone. One Psychic and Punisher and Sigma. This deck was a lot of fun to theorycraft together and I'm really excited to show you. So, let's get into those replays. Our first replay is up against Cyber Dragons. I get to go first, and opening Camilla is just what you want. We're going to be able to dump the Sacred Tree to grab the Spring Breeze. We don't really have anything good to summon, so I'm going to Prospe to hopefully find something. You know, Aguido's good because I can go ahead and send it with the Medora to hopefully dump a Naturia I want to summon, Mole Cricket specifically. I didn't get it, but Goki Pole and Sacred Tree is good, and I can call by the Hurts, and seeing out the Cyber Dragons, I am not afraid of their graveyard. We're going to continue from here. I'll get another Sacred Tree, and we'll be able to get the Mole Cricket out. Mole Cricket will use this effect, sending the top two from Camilla to grab out Sunflower. We're going to go into Diabolantis. Dumping a spore, and we're gonna make this a level two tuner to go into Barone. We're then gonna spore here, go and summon the bead trooper to go to IP Mascarena, and we're gonna go just get Cal back in the hand and be ready for their next turn. I try to call Cyber Dragon Core, just whatever they get. Power Bond is useless, but <laughs> if I can clear my board, I even tried to rebuild it with the Mole Cricket, but they have the right Geki. I decided I'm just going to thin up the deck a little bit, but that's really the end of their turn. They decide not to go for the limiter removal just to keep the monster on board. And you know what? Exchange of the Spirit, not that useful in this card, but being able to search and get into the Keldo is pretty good. Kelbeck will go ahead and send a bunch more cards, and look at that, we get a Sacred Tree. Sacred Tree will grab the Camilla, and that has started our plays once again. We are going to shuffle back all our Nectaria spell traps so we can send it with Camilla to be able to add the Spring Breeze once more. Then we will Spring Breeze here, go ahead and grab that Mole Cricket. Mole Cricket will go ahead and send it to the graveyard, but because they have this on the field, they have the strongest monster, and I can summon two from the deck. I'm going to go for all my plays. I'm going to use Unicorn to bounce it back, and I have Well, Well over Lethal. Our final replay is up against Tear Lament. I get to go first. I will Prosper for three. They will actually catch Tira Tear Lament, which is pretty interesting. I don't find much here, but I will grab the Aguido. They will use their effect to dump three. They hit both a Metanoise and a Shaylin, but they misplay. We take those. I'm going to one for one to get a Mole Cricket out. Then I'll use the Medora to go ahead and get Gravekeeper's Trap. And with the Aguido, yep. I dumped an exchange, so the graveyard is completely locked out, but my graveyard, as you can see, is really good. I'm going to be able to add a bunch of cards and be able to go ahead and set back the Sacred Tree. I'll use my first Nature Spring Breeze to bring back Camilla to send another Sacred Tree. Sacred Tree will go ahead and add another Spring Breeze. None of these are once per turn, by the way. Then we'll go ahead and be able to summon two out because he has that Cashtira monster. Then I'll deal Belantis, screw it, send him a little cricket, use his effect to go into a Barone. Spring Breeze again to go into Camilla. Camilla to go into Beast. We'll Barone to pop that, and once more time we'll go into Spring Breeze. This time grabbing a Bamboo Shoot, so we'll go into Barkeon. I'm going to special summon this because we summoned an Echuria, and they are looking down a lot of negates. I try to call Rhino Heart, but it is another Shaylin. They will Shaylin here. I'll Mole Cricket just for the sake of it. They try to Infib. I have the Barkeon, and this is really looking good because I'll be able to protect myself with the Stink Bug for battle effects. And they'll go Shaylin. Try to Scream. I will Beast here. I'm almost running out of cards in my deck, and I think they're trying to run me out here. I'll add a card with Sacred Tree. They'll pair a D, so send another two, but I'll shuffle it back and they realize they have lost. Well, well, well. I'm pretty impressed. Now, it's pretty obvious I got kind of lucky with that last match. Not only did I play someone who has no idea what they're doing, but I was able to dump the exchange for that graveyard stopping effect. But what the deck was actually able to do was impressive nonetheless. I'm sure there's a lot of other cool things you could be doing with Diabolantis, and this is probably just a very basic look at the card, but I wanted to get this out as soon as I can, because the moment I saw this, I thought this is just a sick looking card, and I thought Naturias would be a great place to use it. I'm expecting to see this guy crop up in insect and plant decks for a very long time, because this effect is actually just so good. <laughs> but I just wanted to get this quick video out before the set drops. If you have any based ideas about how to abuse Diabolantis, please let me know. I'm more than happy to make another video. But with that, like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more. I am no penguin. Bug. Guy. Signing out.